Okay, let's have a look at how we can use gas laws to determine how much gas is present or the volume of gas is present from a chemical reaction. So we call this the gas, or sorry, the mass gas volume conversion. Now there's two things we need to keep in mind before we get started. First of all, we need an accepted value for standard temperature and pressure. And many of the books and resources that we see on the internet give these values. The pressure is given to us as one atmosphere or 101.325 kilopascals. Volume is 22.41 litres. One mole of gas exists as this volume and this pressure. And our temperature is held at 273.15 K. The proper IUPAC definition says that STP is defined as one mole of gas that exists at 100 kilopascals and it gives a volume of 22.71 litres if the temperature is at 273.15. So the IUPAC um, definition says this, the accepted value in many systems across the world gives us those values. Now that actually changes our volume because we see that we've got a slight difference here. So make sure you know which one your um, teacher or lecturer says to use. I'm going to use the second one because that's the IUPAC system. The other thing that we can use as a little bit of background is some of our work that we've done before in calculating the mass of a product formed in a reaction. So we need this formula. The number of moles is equal to the mass divided by the molecular weight or um, molecular mass. So let's have a look at an example just through this and then we'll get on to an application to gases. So I haven't put our gases in here just to simplify things but if we've got hydrogen reacting with oxygen to give us water we have a 1 to a half to a 1 ratio. Let's say that I'm told that I have two moles of hydrogen reacting and it will be with one mole of oxygen and we want to know how many grams of water we produce. Well, if we go through this procedure, the first thing we need to determine is the number of moles of water that we produce. So if we start with our ratio of 1 to 1 up here, if we're given 2 moles, it means that we have to form 2 moles of water. So we can now use the equation that we've been given here and rearrange it for our mass. So mass will be equal to the number of moles times the molecular weight of our water, our product. And if we put our numbers in, 2 moles, 2 moles, times 18 grams, because we've got 18 grams of water for every mole produced. <clears throat> so we'll get a total of 36 grams of water produced for every 2 moles of hydrogen gas we put into the system. Now we're going to extend this because we can actually calculate the number of moles of gas that are being produced in a system by using our pressure, volume and temperature relationship. So we've got two parts to this that we need to keep in mind. First of all the equation that we had on the other slide, the number of moles equals the mass divided by the molecular weight and we also know that at STP, as we referred to before, the number of moles will be equal to the volume of the gas divided by the volume per mole at STP. So let's try and, let's try and apply this to a, a question. We're asked what volume of hydrogen gas would be produced at STP by reacting 50.0 grams of aluminium with hydrochloric acid. So the first thing we need to do is write out a balanced equation. So I have two moles of aluminium reacting with six moles of hydrochloric acid to give us two moles of aluminium chloride and three moles of hydrogen gas. So our relationship is two moles, six moles, two moles and three moles. Now the two important ones are this one here and this one here. This is our original reactant and we've been given the number of moles there and this is the product and we want to find the volume of that product produced. So the first thing we have to do is use this particular equation here to calculate the number of moles of aluminium that have been reacted. So if we rearrange this equation, or sorry, we write this equation down, we're looking for the number of moles of aluminium that are reacting. We get the mass used, 50.0 grams, 
divided by the molecular weight of the aluminium, 26.98, and we find that we have 1.853 moles of aluminium reacted. Now the important part about this is the relationship or the ratio between these two reactants and products because that tells us how many moles of hydrogen we're producing. So for every two moles of aluminium, we produce three moles of hydrogen gas. So we've got 1.853 moles, so we need to work out how many moles of hydrogen we produce. And to do that, we use our ratio here, 3 over 2 times the number of moles of aluminium, the 1.853 here, which gives us 2.780 moles of hydrogen being produced. So that's produced when we use 50.0 grams of aluminium. So we've now got N. So what we now need to use is the second equation to determine our volume. So if we rearrange this equation for volume, we get the volume of H2, not aluminium, will be equal to N, the number of moles, times our molar volume, 22.71. So putting our, the number of moles of hydrogen being produced by our molar volume, we get 63.2 litres. At STP, which is determined before, and we've also given this to three significant figures. We've got three significant figures here, we have three significant figures in our answer. Now we can extend this question even further by changing the conditions that this gas is in. So we take our previous example and we ask what volume would the gas occupy at 25 degrees C and 105 kilopascals. So we've changed the temperature, we've changed the pressure. So the first thing I do is write down what we know. So the first pressure, 100, sorry, is at STP is 100 kilopascals. Depending on what you use for STP, that might be 101.325. Our volume from the previous answer was 63.2. That's our initial volume conditions. Our temperature at STP is 273.15, zero degrees C. We've always got to have our temperature in Kelvin. Our final set of conditions, we've changed the pressure to 105 kilopascals. We've also got 25 degrees C here, which is 298.15 K. The only thing we don't have and what it's asking for is the final volume when we adjust these conditions. So in this case, we use the combined gas law, P1, V1 over T1, our initial set of conditions, equals P2, V2 over T2, our final set of conditions. And if we rearrange for our second volume, P1, V1, T2 over T1, P2 gives us our second volume. And we then put our numbers in, and I've left out the units for the moment. We get 100 kilopascals being P1, our STP, 63.2 litres being our initial volume, 298.15 being our final temperature, because we need T2, 273.15 being our initial temperature, and 105 kilopascals being our final pressure. And this gives us a secondary volume of 65.6 litres. So this, is, this type of question is a combination of um, working out molar volume and then changing the conditions to give us a final volume.